Hello friends, happy Wednesday. I hope your week is going well as we hit the midpoint and looking forward to uh, the downhill slide into the weekend. Ah, so first week back at work after vacation. So far so good. It's been busy. Um, well, actually, I shouldn't say that. It's been quiet, which is nice, but there's been a lot of stuff I had to do just to kind of catch up and so I had a massive number of emails to go through and answer and whatnot, uh, but it's quiet. So there's still a lot of people that are out on vacation. Got the Wednesday basket pipe, um, and I am smoking some. Where did I put it? Black frigate. I was going to put this away, but there's not that much left, so. I'm gonna put it away for next next holiday season. I'll just I'll just finish it up though. I did put away a little bit less than a half tin of Kendall cream uh, that I had jarred up. I'm gonna save that for next holiday because I, I really enjoyed that. And uh, it's hard to get, so this is apparently hard to stay lit. Hard to keep lit. So it's afternoon, it's, um, yeah, it's actually close to 4 o'clock now. I started working around 7.30, so I'm, it's okay that I'm not, uh, not working right now. So I wanted to share with you a couple of books, uh, just, just for fun. Uh, one, I... I got this book months ago, I believe. Uh, I've been wanting to read this for a really long time. It's called Bending the Willow. It's a sort of biographical piece on Jeremy Brett, uh, in particular Jeremy Brett as Sherlock Holmes in the Granada series. Our friend Doug Owen was kind enough to send this to me uh, to, to, to loan it out so I can read it. I've been trying to find it for a long time, and I can't remember if it was just out of print or just very expensive, and I didn't want to buy it uh, because of the cost. But anyway, it's uh, I'm only sh slightly into this, and it's already got me hooked. Uh, very, very interesting. Uh, touching, tragic, but uh, definitely worth a read. If you're a fan of uh, the Granada Sherlock Holmes, for sure. So in... Like I said, I've just kind of cracked that open. I've just just had time to read in the past couple of days, so that's nice. Second book I, I just got in today. I uh, placed an order with Vermont Freehand. I, I had to get a couple of bands uh, for some for a pipe I'm working on, and I. Uh, they're really inexpensive and I thought well, this is silly I'm paying all this for shipping I might as well get something else I'm like frantically looking around for something else and I should have just bought some vulcanite or something but I wanted something different so I looked at the books that uh, Steve has for sale on the site and there was one that I've seen many times and I've often thought about buying and I did and this just came in today it's called Tom Eltang, It's Good to Be a Pipe Maker. Now this book, you can see it's not very thick, and it kind of feels like, I don't know if you're familiar with the Time Life books, but uh, at, at times it's almost like a children's book, where you've got uh, you know more pictures than text on a page. But the photography is beautiful. The pipes are beautiful, and that's the reason I bought it. Now, I wasn't really looking for a, an in-depth expose on Tom Eltang. I, <laughs> I wanted to see his pipes, and it's just got some great photography of, of his uh, of his designs and stuff. So, I'm re really, I've enjoyed skimming that. I haven't haven't uh, looked at it in any real detail. So, that will get added to my growing bookshelf of uh, pipe-related books, which. Uh, had more than 
I thought, to be honest. The third book. Um, I'm I'm a real geek when it comes to these kinds of things. This came in the mail today. It's the Grizzly Industrial Catalog. Look at that thing. Just page after page of woodworking and metalworking uh, magnificence. No. The truth is, I don't need anything, and I mean, I might upgrade at some point, but everything I've got is working. I maintain it. I'm going to have to pause for the furnace. All right, sorry about that, but it is cold here, and uh, we're actually going to be getting some snow tonight. They say uh, three to six inches uh, overnight, so that'll be fun. Haven't had snow in a while. Haven't had snow since last winter, actually. That would be the first snow that we see, other than a light dusting that we had on Christmas Eve. Ah, uh, so what was I saying? Oh, Grizzly. Um, yeah, I, I maintain all my, my equipment. I, I change out bearings and, you know, replace switches, whatever needs to be done. So I rarely need to replace a tool. Um, uh, if I do, I'm going to go to Grizzly. I've been very impressed with their, their uh, quality. Uh, I have uh, Grizzly Bandsaw. Got a Grizzly Bandsaw, a jointer, a drill press, a uh, dust collector. There's the words I was looking for, dust collector. And my metal lathe is a Grizzly. And all have, you know, worked flawlessly for me for many years now. Uh, and, I, you know, you have to sometimes do upgrades. So uh, when I get time in the coming year, I'm going to be changing out all the gears on my metal lathe. I'm going to be replacing them with metal gears. Uh, so that'll be a pretty good, up, pretty significant upgrade. Plus, I'm changing the bearings. I uh, don't want to get into the details about uh, the types of bearings. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to be doing. But the point I'm trying to get to... <laughs> Is that if I did have to replace something, I would go to Grizzly, and it's it has a bad name at least amongst woodworkers. But I don't think the quality issues are really uh, what people make them out to be. And most of the tools that people uh, look at as higher quality are actually made in the same factories as the the Grizzly tools. So and the parts are actually interchangeable. And I know that for a fact because I've you know for example I have a Delta sander that I had to repair and. Uh, couldn't get the parts anymore and Grizzly has a similar model and it turns out the part was absolutely interchangeable. So I was able to fix a $150 sander for $12. So read books and fix your tools guys. I don't know. I wanted to do I wanted to do a video today and I honestly didn't have a lot to talk about. I thought you'd enjoy seeing the books. But I do want to and really the main reason is I want to let you know that I will be back this Friday night. So we are going to uh, return to the Friday night uh, Cane Rod Pipes Virtual Pipe Club format. This will be at 8 o'clock Eastern uh, and we're going to be doing that. what we do at least as well as someone else that might try to do something similar. So I hope that you will join us Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. It's always a good time. And hey, maybe I'll have some more books to show you. All right, folks, I, I don't want this to drag on too much longer, and I have no idea how long it's gone because I have had to split the video, and now I have to edit it. Thanks to the furnace. So before the furnace comes on again, I will just once again say happy Wednesday to you. Wish you all the best, and we'll see you very soon. Bye now.